Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today, I'm going to be doing an updated video on setting up RetroArch to be used inside of LaunchBox. Now, a lot has changed since we put out our first video on RetroArch. It's got a lot simpler. It's pretty easy to do. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is open up a web browser and head over to RetroArch.com. I will leave links in the description. We're going to click on download and scroll down until we find the Windows version. I'm on Windows 10 64-bit, so I'm going to download the 64-bit version. You do not want to download the installer because we want it to be portable. If you're using a 32-bit operating system, you will need to download the 32-bit version. I'm just going to click on download 64-bit. It's going to download for me. Give it a little time. Now it's finished downloading. We need to extract it. I'm just going to show in folder. You will need some extraction software because the built-in software that comes with Windows 10 will not extract this. This is a 7-zip file. You can use WinRAR or 7-zip. I will leave links for both in the description. I'm using WinRAR, so I'll just right-click, extract to RetroArch. Okay, RetroArch is done extracting. I actually want to place this in my LaunchBox directory in case I want to move my LaunchBox build to another PC or another hard drive. RetroArch will stay with it. I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole folder. Then I'm going to navigate to my LaunchBox directory. Mine's located on my C drive. Users. My name is Computer. LaunchBox. Emulators. And I'm going to paste it right in here. If you do not have an emulators folder, you can go ahead and create one. So I'm just going to paste RetroArch right in this directory. Now we have RetroArch in our LaunchBox directory. We're going to go ahead and open it up. There's a few things we need to configure before we start using LaunchBox with it. RetroArch, application, this should be an EXE. Double click, and it'll start RetroArch. Now as you can see, it's not full screen. We're going to make it full screen. I'm using an Xbox One Bluetooth controller with my PC. You can also use the keyboard or pretty much any other USB controller that's compatible with Windows will work in RetroArch. I just happen to be using the Xbox One controller. If you have to use your keyboard, you're going to use your arrow keys to navigate. Enter will be your select key. Backspace will be your back key. And if you want to close it, press escape. But in this tutorial, I'm going to be using my controller. First things first, let's make this go full screen every time we start it up. We're going to move over to settings, scroll to video, and we're going to find start in full screen mode. We want to select this. Now every time you start up RetroArch, it will go full screen for us. So there's a ton of other settings in here. As you can see, you can display your frame rate in the lower left hand corner if you'd like to. You can also turn off frame count. I like to leave this on so I know that my emulator is running at full speed but you can turn it off. We're going to back up to the main menu, and now it's time to download a core. Now RetroArch calls the emulators that we're going to download cores. They're really easy to download using the newest RetroArch 1.7.0. We're going to go to Online Updater, Core Updater, and as you can see, there are a ton of emulators in here. One I'm going to be focusing on is a Genesis emulator. So I'll scroll down until I find it. I'm going to be using Genesis plus GX. So I'm going to press A on my controller or enter on my keyboard. We have the core downloaded. We can now move over to LaunchBox, get RetroArch set up in there, import our Sega Genesis games, and start playing. There are a lot of other settings, but as of right now, RetroArch 1.7.0 out of the box as long as you got your controller set up and going full screen is pretty much ready to go. The only thing you'll need to do is download more cores. We're going to exit RetroArch and start up LaunchBox. All right, now that we have LaunchBox going, it's time to configure RetroArch inside of here. We're going to go up to Tools, Manage Emulators, Add, Emulator Name. There's a little drop down menu and RetroArch is right here. It's already preloaded for us. Now we need to choose the emulator application path. I placed mine in my LaunchBox directory under emulators, so I'll go to Browse, 
Emulators, RetroArch, and I'll find the application. Double click, and we're now set. We're also gonna to go to Associated Platforms. Now these are all of the cores that are already set up for us inside of LaunchBox. If we go back to RetroArch and we wanna play Atari 2600, we're just gonna download the Stella Libretro core. If we wanna do the NES, we're gonna download Nestopia Libretro core. Really easy to do, and as you saw, the one I downloaded was the Genesis Plus GX core. That's what we're gonna be focusing on. So if you're lost, you can find which emulator you need here or which core you need inside of RetroArch. You can also add your own cores if they're not listed here. We're gonna click OK and close. Now it's time to import some Genesis games so we can get playing inside a LaunchBox using RetroArch. So on my desktop, I have a few Sega Genesis games in a folder called Sega Genesis. I'm just gonna open it up. As you can see, they're all zipped up. I'm gonna be importing these into LaunchBox and we're gonna use the RetroArch core we downloaded to play those Sega Genesis games. We're gonna to go to Tools, Import, ROM files. Now this is the import wizard. Read through here, make sure you know why you're clicking next. Select the files to import. You can add individual games or you can add a whole folder. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna add that folder that's right on my desktop. LaunchBox is gonna automatically sort all the games for me. Click OK and next. Platform for imported games. Sega Genesis, so we'll need to drop down menu, scroll down until we find Sega Genesis. Click Next. Now RetroArch should already be chosen, but if it's not, we also have a drop down menu here. Next. Would you like to move or copy your files? I'm gonna copy the files into my LaunchBox Games folder. Now you can always place them there first before you import, but mine are on my desktop, so I wanna copy them into my LaunchBox directory. Copy the files into my LaunchBox games folder. Would you like to download metadata for your games? Yes, we would. Leave the first one checked. Search for game information from the LaunchBox games database. Next. Would you like to download images for your games? Yes, we would. I just leave everything checked, and we're gonna click Next. If this is your first time importing anything in the launch box, you might be prompted to sign into EMU Movies. EMU Movies is free to use, but there's a donation option which allows you to download more music, videos, and snaps per day. It's definitely worth it. Click Next. Would you like to specify any custom options? Not for our Genesis games. Click Next. As you can see, LaunchBox sorted out all of my games out of that folder. It's now going to import them. Click Finish. You will get a progress bar at the bottom. Just be patient. My Genesis games were imported successfully. I'm going to click OK. Now over in the left hand column we should now have a Sega Genesis option. As you can see, we got all of them here. So now all we have to do is play a game. I'm going to double click on Altered Beast. It's going to launch RetroArch for us. I'm going to grab my controller, and we're ready to play. Rise from your grave. So that's it for this video guys, RetroArch has become so easy to set up inside a launch box, it's a no brainer. It works with tons of different games, there are tons of cores you can download, and all of them are compatible with LaunchBox. If we go back to Tools, Manage Emulators, RetroArch, we're just going to click Edit. Associated Platforms, like I mentioned, if you're not sure which core goes with what, you can look right in here. So for N64, we're going to go back to RetroArch and download MooPin64+. Plus. When we import our games into LaunchBox for N64, we're going to choose RetroArch. As long as the core is downloaded inside of RetroArch, you'll be able to play the game. We really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.